a magnitude 3.7 strong earthquake flanking Mauna Loa volcano on the Big Island of Hawaii shook all of the Big Island today. Let's take a look at it together on the maps. Here we are on Volca Hawaii Volcano Observatory and this is the Big Island of Hawaii as we can see here. All of these volcanic, all of these Hawaiian islands are volcanic. Mauna Loa is here, it's the biggest active volcano of the earth, right here. It's a yellow code, over as the others are green, Kilauea. And the earthquake was right around here. This is the Loihi Seamount. As we know, Mauna Loa, Kilauea and Loihi Seamount all have the same magma chamber. And this is Loihi, where was it? I saw it a few minutes ago. What happens? I think it's changed. Okay, that's all right. Don't worry about that. Let's not worry about that. Now we want to go back to, where were we? Okay. No, that's my fault. I'm sorry. I don't want to waste your time. We'll go here. Okay, this is it right here. We're on Sizewell Berkeley. And, oh, we just had another one right on top of that. The blue is what I was looking at, this one here, 3.7 magnitude at minus 1.3 kilometer depth, which is above sea level. And we'll take a look at that, but we also had this one here just now as I was talking to you. Another one right there, 2.6 at 7.3 kilometers depth. Okay, it was just now, so I don't know if anyone's reported it yet, it just happened. And the 3.7 magnitude Right here, the whole island has shaken, as you can see. This is Loihi Seamount over here. Even that has shaken. And a little bit more of a detail right there. This is where it is. This is uh, Mauna Loa. Okay, this is Mauna Loa. You can see very nice the crater there. And Kilauea is right here. Okay. And we are having the deeper quakes, quakes here at uh, Bahala, over here, flanking right here. Bahala is basically just across from the Loihi Seamount. So I would venture to say that any moment now they're going to start reporting that as well. As to having felt it, not yet, okay. Do we have any... Uh, Okay, they don't show us a shaking here. Okay, that's all right. We saw the shaking on the other one, right there. Okay, that's it. And this is Pahala here, right across from Loihi Seamount. And we said all this Mauna Loa, Yellow Code, Kilauea, and Loihi Seamount all have the same uh, magma chamber. And this. Kilauea is the youngest, okay, but let's go back to Mauna Loa because that's the biggest and it's yellow code. There we go, right there. Location of the island, shield volcano, basalt, most recent eruptions, March 24th to April 15th of 1984. It's uh, more than 13,000 feet above sea level, Mauna Loa is the largest active volcano on our planet. Its long submarine flanks descend to the sea floor an additional 5 kilometers, that's 16,400 feet. So altogether it's about 27 something, 27,500 feet. And the sea floor in turn is depressed by Mauna Loa's great mass, another 8 kilometers, that's 26,500 feet. So that makes it the, the, volcan the, the volcano summit about 55,700 feet above sea, above its base. The enormous volcano covers half of the island of Hawaii, but by itself amounts to about 85% of the area of all the other Hawaiian islands combined. The Hawaiian name Mauna Loa means Long Mountain. Its name is that for the sub-aerial part of Mauna Loa's extent for about 74 miles from the southern tip of the island to the summit caldera and then east northeast to the coastline near Hilo. Mauna Loa is among Earth's most active volcanoes, having erupted 33 times since its first well-documented historian eruption 
1843. It's produced large voluminous flows of basalt that have reached the ocean eight times since 1868. It's erupted last in 1984 when a lava flow coming with within 7.2 kilometers or 5.5 miles of Hilo, the largest populated area in the island. Mauna Loa is certain to erupt again, and with such a propensity to produce large flows, we carefully monitor the volcano for signs of unrest. And the current alerts. Mauna Loa, yesterday's alert. Activity summary, Mauna Loa volcano is not erupting. Rates of deformation and seismicity have not changed over the past week and remain above long-term background levels. Observations. During the past week, HVO seismometers recorded about 80 small magnitude earthquakes beneath the volcano's upper elevations. The strongest was a magnitude 2.9. Okay, that was a 2.9. Well, this one is 3.7. So forget the 2.9, this is today 3.7, today on the 29th of February, just now. Is that 29th date or is that 28th date? Let me see. 28th, okay. Because this one here, the 2.6, is now the 29th. Okay. It just happened. Oh, that's the 28th as well. So it's still the 28th, and okay, because I'm sitting in Europe, in Athens, Greece, so it's the 29th here. It's the 28th in the afternoon there. Okay, so this has to change to 3.7, obviously. The uh, event beneath the summit region, nearly early morning hours. Most events occurred at shallow depths. Okay. The global position is system measure how continued slow motion inflation consistent with magma supply to the volcano's shallow storage system. Gas concentrations at the sulfur cone monitoring site uh, on the southwest rift zone remain stable. Fumarole temperatures as measured at both sulfur cone and the summit have not changed significantly. And the background, Mauna Loa, as we said, is the largest volcano on our planet. Eruptions typically start at the summit and within minutes, two months of eruption onset, about half of the eruptions migrate to either the northeast or southwest rift zones. So this case, this earthquake was southwest, of course. Now, Mauna Loa eruptions tend to produce voluminous, fast-flowing lava flows that can impact communities on the east and west sides of the island. Let's take a look at Kilauea since we're here. Going back to Kilauea. And the current alerts for Kilauea. We don't have any current alerts, but it, we know that it is uh, f refilling. Okay. Okay, rates of seismicity of the month were variable. Sulfur dioxide, the pond at the bottom of Halimamau, which began forming July 25th, continues to slowly expand and deepen. And as of early February, dimensions are about uh, 310 feet by 640 feet and 82 feet deep. And we have here. During January, deformation rates at Kilauea summit appear to have decreased somewhat. Gas measurements show continued low levels of sulfur dioxide, consistent with no significant shallowing of magma. Some amounts of sulfur dioxide dissolved into the summit lake. Okay. And the conditions. Although not currently erupting, areas of persistently elevated ground temperatures and minor releases of gas are still found in the vicinity of the 2018 Lower East Rift Zone. The fissures there, these include steam water, very small amounts of hydrogen sulfide, and carbon dioxide. These conditions are expected to be long-term, similar to conditions that followed following the 1955 eruption, continue for years to decades. Kilauea remains an active volcano, and it will erupt again. Although we expect clear signs prior to the next eruption, the time frame of warning may be short. Island of Hawaii residents should be familiar with the long-term hazard map of Kilauea volcano. 
And let's go to the monitoring. We'll get some uh, earthquakes there. Let's see the earthquakes in the area. Okay, push out a little bit. Okay, this just happened now. The 2.6 that we were talking about. And this was the 3.7. Okay. And... Oh, this just happened now as well. This is new, 2.1 in the Pahala area. Depth, 20 miles. They're always deep there. And depth, sorry, I didn't want that. I just wanted to show you here. Wait a minute. The red ones are just now, in, within the hour. 2.2, 19, 2.1, and 2.9 around Malaloa. Okay. So that's it. It's got some very big earthquakes today. This was, and, they, and this one shook the whole island, as you can see. That's why a lot of these happened a few hours later. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.